Good evening, everyone. We hope that you guys have had a wonderful uh, Labor Day weekend and that you actually got Monday off to find some time to rest and relax. And um, we want to invite you to join us and maybe share this today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, what we need to do when we don't hear God's voice. What do we need to do when when we've prayed and it seems like the heavens are brass and we don't feel like our prayers are being effective? Um, so we're going to talk about that today. But before we do that, I just want to encourage you, if you have prayer requests, to please type your prayer requests in on the message areas or um, even just uh, or just respond right now with a prayer request. We've got people writing those down and we're going to take time to pray over those requests. We've had several people that have been healed uh, because God is in the healing business. He's doing it everywhere. There have been so many reports of other churches and other people in other nations where God is actually healing people. Uh, even one report came out on news this last week of someone being raised from the dead. So God is up to great things. And so we want you to know that if God has done something great for you and God has blessed you, that we want you to record it so that you can give God the glory. So we're allowing you to do that on our page. If you want to give a testimony, type a testimony so that we can share that and share what God is doing to build the faith of the people, to build a faith so that people can soar. Sometimes we go through life and we have lots and lots of faith and we can believe God for anything. And we do believe that all things are possible through God. And then there's other times we go through life and because of circumstances or because of uh, things that have happened to us, sometimes we don't, we don't have that faith. But I want you to know that there's a group of people that have faith for you. And we have faith that God can heal. We have faith that God can indeed do things uh, that we can't see. And so tonight we're going to kind of do a recap about talking about uh, hearing God's voice, and then we're going to talk about what to do when you do not hear God's voice. So before we get started, though, let's start with our Worries Decree. Everyone take out your Worries Decree, and let's let's just testify to God's never-ending grace of who we are in Christ. That's what we are in Christ, is what the Worries Decree says. The Worries Decree says, I am anointed, awesome, accepted. I am balanced, blessed, and beloved. I am called, capable, and created. I am dynamic. I'm determined. I'm dedicated. I'm enthusiastic, I'm excited, and I'm enabled. It tells us that we are faithful, free, and favored. We are genuine, grateful, gracious. We are honest, happy, and healed. We are insightful, influential. We are important. We are joyful, justified. We are jewel. We are kind, kindred spirit. We are knowledgeable. We are logical, loving, and liberated. We're magnificent, motivated, and mentoring. We're new, we're nice, we're necessary. We're optimistic, organized, observant. We are persistent, poised, perceptive. We are quality, we are quick on our feet. We're redeemed, we're radiant, we're resilient. Uh, we are resourceful, we're satisfied, self-assured, self and secure. We are thoughtful, trustworthy, temperate. We're unique, understanding, and unabashed. We are valuable, vibrant, and we are victorious. We are wise, witty, and winning. We are exuberant, flexible, and excited. We are youthful, yielded, and we are zealous. And that is a mouthful to say. But when we get up every morning and we declare who we are in Christ, the enemy has to take note. The enemy has to know who we are. The enemy needs to know that we know who we are. You see, the enemy goes about and his number one job is to deceive you and to lie to you. And if he can convince you that you are not worthy, you are not valuable, if he can convince you that you're not organized, if he can convince you that you are not a daughter of God and that you are not anointed, then if you believe that, then the enemy has got you right where he wants you to be. And so this is who God's word says we are. The Worries Decree is very important. It's not just for women. It's for men. It's for young teenagers. It's for ministers. It's for anyone that is, is, is called by God and set aside by God to do something great and wonderful. You are called by God to do great things, okay? And so we need to know who we are. We need to remind ourselves who we are. I used to take that on my window in my car. It used to be in my mirror in my bathroom in the morning. I had it on index cards and I would flip through the index cards when I stopped at uh, gas stations or when I stopped at uh, red light traffic lights. I was constantly reminding myself who I was. When the enemy comes and he begins to lie to me and begins to tell me that things are not going to work out, that the life is horrible, that he begins to tell me that uh, I'm not enough, I'm not good enough. 
then I just pull out my degree and say, oh, no, enemy, I'm anointed, awesome, accepted, I'm balanced, I'm blessed, I'm beloved, I'm called, I'm created, I'm capable. I begin to go through this and tell the enemy, let me remind you of who I am. And so I want to encourage you today, if you've had a bad day, if you've had a day where you've found yourself maybe dealing with some self-doubt, maybe you've had a day where you're asking yourself, where is God? I've prayed to him, I've cried out to him, I don't understand how God can allow these things to happen. If that's the case, just pull out your words decree and declare and decree who you are in Christ because you are all of those things and you are more. Amen. So today we're going to dive right in and I'm going to do a little bit of teaching today and I'm going to review, uh, kind of review as a teacher. I always review in my classroom. So we're going to review a little bit about what we talked about last week and we heard some awesome testimonies from Sarah and Courtney and how God has spoke to them and God talked to them in many different ways. So we're going to review a little bit about God speaking to you. The first thing I want to say to you is that learning to hear God's voice clearly Learning to know God's voice clearly is invaluable to any Christian. We have to know our commander in chief's voice. We have to know our shepherd's voice. We have to know so that we can follow that voice. There are many voices in the world. There's voices of the media. There's voices of our peers. There's voices of even uh, educational systems. There's all kinds of voices that we hear on a daily basis. But one voice that we need to make sure that we can hear is God's voice. And so many of us, how do I hear God's voice? Well, I want you to know that God is always speaking. He's always talking. Uh, A.J. Tozer, he said, it is the nature of God to speak. It's not God's nature to be silent. It's not God's nature to keep you in the dark. It's not God's nature to make you wonder. God wants you to understand that he is always speaking. He speaks to us. He gives us his direction. It's never the Lord who is not speaking. If you're in a relationship with Christ and no one is speaking, it might be that you're just not hearing God because God is always speaking. It is who, sometimes us who don't hear. Sometimes we don't hear his voice, you know, and the Bible talks about in John chapter 10, verses three through five. I want to read the scripture to you, and this is going to kind of be my basis of what we're going to talk about today. And, and Jesus here in this scripture in John chapter 10, verses three through five, he's talking about himself as the shepherd. He's, he's referring to himself as the shepherd of the sheep, and he's calling us the sheep. And he's talking about himself, and he's saying that the only way into the sheepfold, the only way into heaven is through Jesus Christ, is through his salvation. We have to go through him. He's the open door to salvation. So in order to hear God's voice, we must first have Jesus in our heart, and we must recognize him as our Lord and Savior, and we must acknowledge him as our shepherd and that we are the sheep. It says, though, in John chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, it says, To him the porter opened, and the sheep hear his voice. And he called his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And we put it forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. First of all, I want to point out that he says he calls his sheep by name. You're not a number to God. You're not just someone that he created and left and abandoned. You are his child, and he desires to be your father, and he knows you by name. The Bible says he knows your name. He knows his sheep, and he leads them. And he will put you forth out and he will go forth before you and you will follow him because you know his voice. And it says in a stranger will the sheep not follow. They will flee from a stranger for they do not know the voice of the stranger. And so what I want you to understand is there's many voices out there and the enemy attempts to send strangers voices to you. He attempts to send many voices to you to quiet the, the voice of the father. And when the enemy does that, his job is to sidetrack you and get you off course. His job is for you not to hear what God is saying. When we go through a time of not hearing what God is saying, then we are not getting a download from God. How many of you have ever had uh, to, to get new downloads in order for your apps on your phone to work? How many of you have ever had to pull something off the internet and you've had to download it first into your hard drive? Well, God is always downloading information to those that are listening. He's always speaking to his sheep. John chapter 10, verse 3 through 5 tells us he is speaking to his sheep, and his sheep hear his voice, and he knows his sheep's name. So I want to encourage you. In verse 3, it says that 
The sheep will hear him and they will follow him and not a stranger. So I want you to realize that God is indeed always speaking. He is speaking to you. He is speaking to your family. He is speaking to your children. The Bible says all those who believe it will hear God's voice. In the New Testament, Jesus says 15 times, he says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now, Jesus was not talking about our physical ears at that point. He was talking about our spiritual ears. Do you have your spiritual ears turned on? Are your spiritual ears in tune to the, the Father's voice, to the shepherd's voice? He said 15 different times, Jesus said this passage, he who has ears, let him hear in the New Testament. And so I want you to understand that hearing God's voice is no mystery. Hearing God's voice is not this deep, dark secret that sometimes we make it out to be. That when you see mighty men and women of God hearing God's voice and acting and activating God's voice, that is something God wants for you. When you go to church and people come to you and they speak a word of encouragement or they speak a word of knowledge to you, do you realize God wants you to activate his voice that way also? God's desire and plan for you is that no one be left in the dark. We have a slogan at our home. Uh, we call it no behind, left behind. And so we don't want to leave anybody behind uh, spiritually, academically, or even physically. We don't want to leave any, even socially. We don't want anybody in our home left behind. So sometimes when I'm at the door and I'm the recruit, uh, or what I, I consider myself sometimes in the morning, the drill sergeant, come on, come on, hurry, hurry, hurry. Pronto, pronto, let's go, let's go. No behind, no behind. I'll yell that out sometimes just to get my girls moving and get them to the door and get them into stage four of actually leaving. Stage four is when we walk through the door with all of our things and we then get into the vehicle to leave. Stage five is when we actually turn the car on and leave. So there's probably five stages or so in your family too of people leaving. But we don't want anybody left behind. God desires that no one be left behind. God desires that everybody hear his voice. I want to talk to you a little bit about a radio when i was in the car and i had the radio on i could hear the radio i could hear what was being sung i could hear when they were talking i could hear the announcements they were making but now that i am not in the car the radio is still going i'm not tuned into it i'm not the receiver right in that moment i'm not inside my car listening to it and so god is the transmitter and he is always working his transmitter is always in good working condition but my question is, what about the receiver? The receiver is you. Is, are you working? Is your receiving working? Are you able to hear God's voice? You see, the transmitter on the radio and the TV station is always working 24-7. But we have the ability to turn it off. We have the ability to turn it down and not hear it. And so sometimes that's what happens to us in life. Sometimes we do not realize that God is always speaking. The Bible tells us he's looking for someone to listen. He's looking for someone to hear what he has to say. He's looking to bring revelation to his children and to his, his, his sheep. But are we listening? And so sometimes we get too busy that we don't hear him. Sometimes God is, is trying to talk to us and we've tuned him out or we've turned him off. And sometimes we do that because of busyness of life. We get very busy with our schedule and with our agenda. We get very busy. Sometimes we do that even with our prayer life. We'll come in to pray and we'll only pray to get answers. We will not pray to get to know God. We will not pray to find out God's desires. We'll not pray to find out his passions or his convictions. We'll just go and we will give God a list and we'll say, this is what we need done. And then when we're finished, we don't even take time to hear what God has to say. We'll just get up and move away and say, well, I've done my prayer time today. Sometimes the enemy will bring in distractions. And I want you to understand those distractions are meant to sidestop you. Those distractions are meant to cause you to fall. Those distractions are meant to keep you out of the presence of God. Because if the enemy knows, if the enemy knows who that you know who you are, and the enemy knows, he knows this, he knows if you find out who you are and what your true identity is, then it's over for him. It's over for the enemy. If you come to that place where you know for sure who you are, then it's over for the enemy because he cannot distract you anymore. Sometimes it's our self-concept or it's our identity because we don't feel worthy enough. We don't feel valuable enough. We don't feel um, that we are able. We feel worthless because we've made mistakes. We feel unworthy or discounted because of the past 
uh, our life or because of what someone else has done to us to make us feel that way. And so sometimes it's our self-concept and our self-doubt that keep us from hearing God's voice. But I want you to know that God does speak to us. He speaks to us through the Bible. He speaks to us through his word his word that he's preserved for us. He speaks to us through prayer, uh, through prayer time when we pray. He speaks to us through other people, through preachers, through prophets. God speaks to us through music. God speaks to us all the time. And I want you to know that sometimes we have to come to a place where we're still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know me is what God is saying. Basically, we have to come out of that place of busyness and find a place at his feet. And we have to be more like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus than more like Martha and be busy doing great things. We might be doing good things, but is it the necessary and the godly thing? God wants us to sit at his feet. It is in our stillness, not in busyness, that we tune in and then we listen with our spiritual ears and we hear the voice of God. So last week we talked about ways in which God speaks. So I want to get to that, go over that just a little bit. And, and if God has spoke to you this week, text it. Text us and let us know what God has spoke to you. Let us know what he's saying to you. Let us hear what God is saying so we can hear what God is saying to many people. John chapter 4 verse 24 says that God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So not only does God speak in our still times when we get up and have that extra 10 minutes in the morning, set our alarm a little early to go pray. When we find time at the end of the day after putting our children to bed and running our marathon throughout the day, sometimes when we find that time, God will speak to us. Sometimes God will speak to us in the simple way. Sometimes God has spoken to me, and I'll give you a silly story, but it was very a powerful time when God began to speak to me. It was with the blade of grass. I was in college. I had all these books. I had gone to all of my classes for the very first time. I was overwhelmed by all the syllabi, all the, the assignments, and all the papers I was going to have to write for the first semester, and I was just so heavy. And as I'm walking out of the the door or the building where I had my last class, I was just walking. I really wasn't paying attention, and then I kind of stumbled off the sidewalk and stumbled onto the grass. And when my books fell on the grass, the, the, the books crushed my grass. And as I looked at the grass, I said, God, that's how I feel right now. I feel like I am completely and totally overcome. I am overcome with all these responsibilities and all these tasks and all these things. He said to me, he said, look at the book. Look how the book is pressing on the grass. And I looked very closely. And then I felt the Lord say to me, now pick the book up. And when I picked the book up, the grass began to bounce back up to its original form. And God says, you may feel pressed, you may feel pushed down, you may feel perplexed, and you may feel burdened. But if you'll trust me, I will bounce you back. I will help you spring back up. And so that was God's confirmation for me for that, that semester when I was in the middle of writing papers or staying up very late to study and trying to to, to make good grades, I would always go back to that blade of grass and say, this is not going to be a permanent thing for me. I will not feel this stress permanently. I will not feel this pressure permanently. I will learn to balance and God will help me to spring back. And so that was a word that God spoke to me that I used that whole semester. It was very simple. It was just of me stumbling, me falling. You know, my, my daughter tells a story about a time when she was ready to go to bed. She was tired. She turned out all the lights. And the Holy Spirit told her and the Lord spoke to her and said, go move your computer. It was sitting on the counter right next to the sink and next to a glass of water. And so she gets up and goes and moves her computer. And the next day, that glass of water had been spilled. The cat had knocked the water over and would have knocked it over on top of her laptop had she not listened to that small voice. So God speaks to you in small voices. There have been times I've been places the Holy Spirit said, get out of here. I felt God speak to me and say, move. I felt God speak to me and say, tell that lady that I love her. Tell that lady that I'm care I care about her. Sometimes God has spoke words to me that don't make any sense to me. But when I go to the person and speak it, it makes lots of sense to them. It's not my job to understand everything God is saying to when he's wanting me to speak to someone else. It's my job just to fulfill and be the messenger for God at that time. And so God will speak to you in a small voice. Sometimes God will speak to you in an audible voice. And I think I shared last week about a dream that I had where God spoke to me in such a way that I knew it was him and kind of woke me up from my dream. It was that loud. God spoke to Samuel and Moses. He speaks in dreams. He'll speak to you. He spoke to John the Revelator on the island of Patmos. He spoke an audible voice to him and God will speak audibly to you, but he will speak to your spirit. He will speak to your spirit. 
Your spirit needs to be in tune to what God is saying. Communication with God is spirit to spirit. There's a song that says deep cries out to deep. That comes from a scripture in the Bible where it says the deep things in us will cry out to the deep things of God. And so God wants to, to communicate with you. Deep cries to cry, to cries out. God wants you to understand that he wants to speak to you. Sometimes it's in a still small voice. Sometimes it's in an audible voice. Sometimes it's through words and thoughts and impressions. And I think I gave some stories last week on this. I don't want to repeat myself for those of you that are listening, but God speaks to us in many Many different ways. Sarah and Courtney were also talking about ways in which God speaks to them. Often we miss the voice of God because we are looking for something big. We're looking for something huge. We're looking for this great big revelation. And God may be saying, get your house in order. God may be saying, you need to get a new car. God may be saying, it's time for you to get healthy. God may be saying, you need to clean out your garage. I mean, something so simple. God will start with the simple things and see if we're faithful with those simple things before he begins to give us bigger words and words of knowledge for other people or to give us divine revelation. He's going to see if he can trust us with the small things. So, if God has been speaking to you, saying you need to be kinder to your husband, you need to bless your husband in the morning, you need to pray over your children at night when they go to bed, those are small ways in which God is speaking to you. So activate those things and begin to speak and do those things that God's asked you to do. God has such many different ways that he speaks. He doesn't have just one language. He doesn't just choose one language. And you know what he does with you? Guess what? He may start out in a small, still voice, but then he may move to dreams. And then he may move back to an audible voice. And then he may move to uh, uh, coincidences, uh, of a repeating coincidence of things that are happening. God will challenge you to see if you're really listening. He will stretch you to see if you're really hearing his voice. But God never speaks just one way all the time. He is such a creative God that he will speak through radio songs. He'll speak through Bilton boards. He'll speak through people. He'll speak through words, maybe a certain word that consistently comes up. God will begin to speak in these. Sometimes it's in groups of three. You'll hear that word three times and that's God speaking to you. Sometimes you'll wake up three times in a row. That might be God speaking to you. And so what I want you to understand is to get out of thinking that God is going to speak to you in just one way. He has many different ways in which he speaks to us. Sometimes it's flash pictures. Uh, I think, did I tell a story last week? I'm not sure about one day I was praying with a girl at the altar and God gave me a, a picture of her in the middle of all these roses and all the roses were red except one and it was yellow. And, and I told her that and she began to weep and cry because God had spoke to her a, a, a word previously about five years before about a yellow rose and about how he sees her as a yellow rose. And so when I gave that word, it confirmed to her what God had spoke to her five years ago. And so what if I had just dismissed that and said, no, no, she really wants to be a red rose. What if I allowed my own thinking to pollute what God was saying? And so what I want to encourage you to do is allow God to speak to you. Practice this. Practice this. How many of you were in your school, you practiced your math? How many of you practiced your multiplication? How many of you practiced writing? How many in school, you practiced the writing format to write a paper? All of those things require practice. Then why do we think that we're just going to supernaturally fall into this? We could. We could supernaturally do this if God wanted, but God wants us to show that we're serious by practicing, practicing hearing his voice and activating what he says for you to do. If you're at the grocery store this week and God says, tell this person I love them, do it. Don't, don't, don't back up and say, you're surely not talking to me. If you hear it, then God's speaking to you. If you're at a restaurant and God speaks to you and gives you a word for that waitress, say, hey, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm really practicing learning to hear God's voice, but God wants me to share this word with you. God wants me to share this word with you. And so I want you to understand that when we activate the voice of God in ourselves, it's not just for us. When God speaks to us, it's not just for us. God is speaking so that others can hear his voice too, so that you can speak and uh, be an oracle of his voice to other people. God speaks in dreams, unusual circumstances. Look at Moses with the burning bush. What happened with the burning bush? What does the Bible tell us happened with Moses in the burning bush? When the bur bush started burning, Moses took note. But when the bush did not get consumed, Moses turned, took off his shoes and turned to look at the bush. And sometimes we need to do that with our spiritual walk in Christ. When God speaks, we need to stop what we're doing and turn and listen and say, I'm listening, Lord. What are you saying to me?
Samuel got up out of bed and went to Eli three times and said, Eli, did you call me? And finally, Eli realized it's God speaking to him. And so when Samuel said, God, I'm listening, speak, that's when God spoke. Sometimes we have to change our position. Sometimes we have to change what we're doing. Sometimes we have to change our agenda. Sometimes we have to change even things that we think are good things. And God say, nope, that's a good thing, but that's not necessarily a God thing. We have to work at changing those things because God wants to speak to us. He got Moses' attention and then he wanted to speak to him. And so sometimes we have to, we have to really pay attention to God's voice. He speaks in unusual uh, coincidences. And I talk to you guys about sometimes waking up. There was a time at our church uh, that I'm at now, there were several of us women that were waking up every day at 3.30, at 3.30 in the morning. And we all thought it was just God was speaking to us. But I had such a burden to pray for the church and the safety of the church. And, and I began to share this with other people. I said, every day this week, God has awakened me at 3.30 to pray over our church and our property. And then somebody else said the same thing. And then somebody else said the same thing. Before you knew it, there were about 10 of us women that God had been waking up every night at 3.30 to pray over the church. And you know why? There was an attack being set up against the church. There was actual activity taking place at 3.30 on our campus. Uh, we actually caught it on camera one night. And then we realized that is why God was waking us up. And so listen when God is speaking. Now, sometimes you'll say, I'm too tired at night. Well, put a tablet by your bed. That's what I do. I put a tablet and a pencil by my bed. I have my phone and a flashlight ready to go. And if God begins to speak to me at night, I get up and write down whatever he says. I empty it out. And I say, God, do you want me to pray about this? you want me to get out of bed? Or do you want me just to... to Focus on studying this tomorrow. And God will let you know. If you have an intense burden, you need to pray. And pray until that burden lifts. If you feel like you need to pray for a certain person. There's times when the Lord has had me up at 4 o'clock in the morning texting people words uh, that, that they'll receive the minute they get up and open up their phone and see. Uh, even this morning, God gave me a word that to, to speak to, to people and, 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 and to share that word. And so God wants you to know that he will speak to you. He will speak to you in your five senses. Your five senses are activated and they are meant to be in alignment with the spiritual. God is a well-rounded person. He doesn't teach us in isolation. He doesn't just want our spirit man to be strong. He wants our physical man and our emotional man and our spiritual or our social man to be strong. He wants all of us to be strong. He wants your whole body to be strong. And so God does speak to you through your senses. Sometimes I've been praying and I've, I've smelt a sweet scent, a just beautiful scent that will come up. And I'm like, did anybody spray perfume? Did anybody spray deodorizer? No, it was the presence of God that was invading the room because our praise became a sweet scent to God. Sometimes I, I've been out and I, 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 this fear will overtake me. I, I, and it's not fear that I'm afraid of something, but it's a reverent type fear that will come down in the depths of my body, my, my belly, and I will feel God saying, you need to move. You need to get out of the way. You need to get in your car. You need it to be locked. You need to take care of this. And so God will speak things to you. So I want you to understand that God will speak in different ways. If you're one of those people that's saying, I don't know how God speaks, God speaks in different ways. What you need to do is get tuned in. How do you get tuned in? You get in his presence. You get in his presence and you spend time in his presence and you say, Lord, I want to hear your voice. Lord, I'm dedicating and consecrating myself right now to hear your voice. What are you saying to me? And I tell my students to pray this every day. What are you saying to me, God? And what do you want me to do about what you're saying to me? Is it for me or is it for someone else? How can I serve you today with the words and the downloads that you're giving me? What can I do today, Father, that can change someone else's life? How can I further the kingdom today? What can I do for the kingdom's sake today, God? What can I do to help other people come in contact and come to know you? And so one of the things that you can do is you can cultivate an appetite for what you can't see. Let me say that again. Cultivate an appetite for what you cannot see. What is it that you cannot see? What is it that's unseen to you? You see, Abraham was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. The city had not been built yet. He was looking for it. He was looking for the things that were unseen. David said, I'm a stranger in this world I'm a stranger on this earth. Teach me, Lord. Open up my heart. Open up your word to me. I have everything 
but I am not at home here in this world. Even David, the man after God's own heart, was looking for those things were unseen. So in order to hear God's voice, you need to cultivate an appetite for what you cannot see. God communicates with us sometimes, and it's not in black and white. It's not always, he does communicate with the word, through the word to us, but sometimes he wants to communicate in things that we can't see. You see, what David was doing is he was pleading with God to show him his very way for God to show him his passions, for God to show him his heart. Why is it that David became a man after God's own heart? Because he took time to be in the presence of God. He rejoiced when he was in the presence of God. He was happy when it came time to go to the presence of God. He said, it's better for me to be in the house of God. He said, that's what he wanted to do. He wanted to be in the house of God. He was glad when it was time to enter into the presence of God. And David became a man after God's own heart because when he was in the presence of God, he heard from God. He began to understand God's passion. He began to understand God's convictions. He began to understand what God was saying. And then he put it in song. He actually sang it back to God. And that's where we get the Psalms at. And so I want you to begin to cultivate an appetite for what you can't see. So many times we are taught to bring God into our problem from an earthly perspective. We pray what we see. But God says, can you turn that around and pray what heaven says? Pray that God's will will be done. So if I was going to pray for my sister who is uh, has been uh, addicted to drugs for many years, Instead of saying and praying from earth to heaven and praying, God, uh, help her not to be addicted anymore. I pray that I come against this addiction in the name of Jesus. Instead of praying that, I'm going to pray heaven on the situation. And I'm going to pray, God, I thank you that she will no longer be addicted to drugs, but be addicted to you. I thank you that the power that is in heaven is going to come and, and, and rest over her so much so that, that this addiction that she has will be God broken, will be destroyed. I declare she's going to be a member of the kingdom of God. I declare she's going to understand that she's a daughter of God. I declare and I decree over my sister that Lord, she will no longer have an appetite for drugs but have an appetite for you and your presence and your word and you can see the difference in those type of prayers right can you see the difference so many times we pray earth into our prayers and God is saying why don't you pray heaven into your situation he says your kingdom come your will be done Jesus prayed that when he taught his disciples how to pray he said let your will be done let your kingdom come let's pray those things that we can't see as though they are let's pray and declare Lord I thank you that you're going to give me words of knowledge for people I thank you God that you're going to speak to me so much so that you're going to give me clear direction and I'm going to know exactly what I need to be doing in this situation I thank you that you're going to give me dreams before I go to bed you're going to give me revelation father in coincidences, the things that happen and things that consistently and repetitively happen. I thank you, Father, that you are going to speak to me, God, because I am your daughter and I want to hear your voice. Uh, don't leave me out, God. I want to be like David and I want to be a person after your own heart. And so God loves that and he cherishes that when people are seeking him with everything that's within them. And so, so I want you to pray the opposite. If you've got problems and you've been praying your problems from a an earthly perspective to pray heaven into your problems speak the word into your problems okay as you pray speak the truth speak it i believe and declare my sister is going to be able to understand and fully comprehend that she's fearfully and she's wonderfully made and that she is a daughter of god and that god wants her in his kingdom's sake and in his kingdom and in his in in his arms god really is begging her to come and sit in his presence and so when we begin to pray that we begin to see that our prayers become full of faith and that faith is what positions us to carry out the will of god when we pray faith believing faith and we pray the word of god it then positions us to carry out god's will or to force what god's will is for the earth do you understand what I'm trying to say? Is that making sense to anybody? So what I want you to understand is that Paul said that living from the unseen, what you, the unseen, excuse me, living from the unseen, what you can't touch, what you can't see, what you can't feel, what you can't manipulate, living from the unseen is really eternal. It's an eternal thing. But when we operate in what we can see, it's temporal. When we pray what we can see, we, we pray what we can 
think, we pray what we think is manageable or what we pray what we can manipulate, then it's temporal. But when we pray what we have no control over and we pray those things that aren't as though they are, then guess what happens? We are praying eternal prayers, okay? Now, when you cultivate an appetite for what you can't see, God begins to speak to you in ways that you can't always see, but your spirit man can hear it because your spirit cries out to God. And God will begin to speak to you even when others are not around. He'll begin to speak to you at times when you are by yourself, when you're lonely, when you're sad, when you're happy, he'll speak to you. God never quits speaking. And so I just want to encourage you that. And this is what I want to encourage you with. Don't start, uh, you know, some of you say, well, I, I've never operated this way. I've never been able to hear God's voice. I thought that was only for ministers. I thought that was only for prophetic people, people who had a prophetic anointing. No, God wants to speak to every one of you. Jesus said 15 times in the New Testament, he who has ears, let him hear. And if you have your spiritual ears on, you can hear the voice of God. And some of you say, well, Pastor Anna, how do I begin? First of all, I want you to start where you are, but don't end where you start. Start now. Start when you go to bed tonight. God, I really want to hear your voice. When you get up in the morning and have your quiet time, or whenever you have your quiet time, God, I'm really wanting to hear your voice. I'm going to silence all of this noise. I'm going to put my schedule away, and I just want to hear what you have to say to me, God. What is it that you want to say? I'm listening, Father. And the more you spend time with him, the more you're in his presence, guess what will happen? You will engage you will engage in your relationship with God until your passion becomes his passion, until your convictions become his convictions. Therefore, until your desires become his desires. So many times we use that scripture, delight yourself in the Lord, <laughs> and he'll give you the desires of the heart. Some people pray that prayer and they pray it in a wrong way. They're praying it because they want a car. They're praying it because they need a boat or they're praying it because they want a um, you know, tall, dark, and handsome to come into their life, and they want them to be six foot five and have, uh, you know, big brown blue eye or big blue eyes, and want to be able to sing, preach, and talk, or want to be able to, you know, be rich. And we pray all these things, and we want all these things, but that's not what God meant when He said that scripture. He meant that your desires become His desires, that you are so connected and spend so much time in the presence of God that you are actually taking on His DNA. And your passions are becoming his passions. You'll have compassion for the lost. You'll have passion for those that may be weak. You'll have, oh, abundant love for those who've made mistakes in the kingdom of God. You'll have an overabundance of encouraging words to speak to people. And, and you will find that there will be no jealousy in your heart. You won't be in competition with other Christians. You won't be full of conceit and, and, and say, I should have got that song or I should have done this or that should have been me or the pastor should have asked me to do that or I can't believe they, they passed me up to do that. That was my job. There will be none of that. Once you get in the presence of God and you begin to spend time, then guess what? Your heart becomes what his heart is. And that's exactly what happened to David. David became a man after God's own heart because he spent time in God's presence. So much so that God's DNA was imparted to David. And so I just want you to understand that God is wanting your passions to line up with his passions and that your convictions that you have will not be selfish convictions, but not, but will be God convictions. Okay. Now, another thing you need to do is after you cultivate an appetite for what you can't see, the second thing you need to do, if you're, if you're at a state and you're beginning and saying, I need to hear God's voice, or you're saying to me, I can't hear God's voice. I don't know what you're talking about. Is that you need to realize you are a son and daughter of God, that you are in a relationship with God. You're in a relationship with God. And that when you hear God, he wants you to understand how special you are, how unique you are. God wants you to know that you are his and he loves you. He created you. He made you. He formed you. He put all the good things inside of you. And he wants you to, the, to realize that it's a partnership. So many times we approach God as a servant. We look at him as, as I'm a servant. I'm serving God. And we've been taught that from a young age. You've got to serve in the kingdom of God. Well, servants are about tasks. Servants are about um, completing a list and performing. But a child is really different. A son and daughter, they're more concerned about relationship. They're more concerned about 
uh, talking to God and communicating with God. They're more concerned about knowing his voice and his desires. They're more concerned about uh, acceptance and, 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 and being able to spend time with God. It's not about give me a list to do and I'll complete it. You want me in Sunday school? I'll do Sunday school. You want me in the choir? I'll do choir. No, it's about spending time with God and getting to know. They're saying the internet's messing up here, guys. I don't know. I want you to pray to know God, not to just get answers, okay? We need to pray. Uh, when we pray, so many times we pray to try to convince God to complete our list. If we give him a bucket list and say, God, I need you to do all these things for me, and God is saying, I, I, I think you're the answer. I think if you pray and spend time with me, there's going to be so much of a deposit of me and such anointing in you because I'm going to download that anointing and that power that you lay your hands on people and they're healed, that you speak into people's situations and things begin to shift and happen. That's what God is wanting to do. That is being prophetic. God wants to give you words of knowledge for people, not that you um, you say, well, I'm not, I'm not, I can't do that, Pastor. And yes, you can. Your mistakes are your mistakes. The past is the past. This is the future for you. God wants to begin to give you words of knowledge and begin to speak things to you. He wants you to, to just delight in knowing him and delight in hearing his voice and then obey his voice. Obey his voice. Listen, if you will cherish the word of the Lord, whether it's the word of God or the word that he gives you through a still voice, an autumn of voice, if it's words that he gives you through dreams and testimonies, if it's words that he gives you through words of knowledge, if it's words that he gives you when, you know, a thought, an impression, uh, sometimes a picture. God has spoken to me through a picture before and told me to, to share that with somebody. And it didn't make sense to me. But when I stepped out on and did it and I cherished the word of God, then guess what? You become what you cherish. What you put value in is what is important to you. And if you value hearing God's voice and if you cherish the word of God, then that is God will begin to speak. He will speak to you more than just one time. It won't be an occasional thing. He will speak to you on a basis where he knows that he can trust you. Now, what do you say, Pastor Anna? I can't hear God's voice. I've tried that. I've tried. There are four things that you can do, and I'm going to share those four things with you really quickly. If you're still struggling to hear God's voice, and and you maybe it's you've not practiced enough. I had one student that was in my sixth grade class, and we took time to hear God's voice, and he came to me and said, Pastor Anna, I, I tried. I really try to quiet all the voices in my mind. I really tried hard. And, and I said, well, what, what were you looking for? And he said, I didn't get anything from God. And so then I said, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep every day going into the presence of God. We're going to quiet our schedule. We're going to put on some music. We're going to just listen to the listen to see what God speaks to us. Other students started getting pictures. Other students started getting words. And he wasn't getting anything. And so what he kept telling me, I'm not getting anything. And so this happened in sixth and seventh grade. Well, then as he went into eighth grade, I finally said, well, what do you hear when you're quiet? And he said, well, I hear that God loves me and God loves mankind and God loves my neighbor. And I said, that is God speaking to you. And God will speak to you very elementary. Sometimes when we go in to hear God's voice, we want these big messages and these downloads and we want these scriptures to that we've read for all of our life to come up and have complete different meaning. And God says, I'm just going to speak to you in the small things. If I can trust you with the small things, I'll give you bigger things. And so one of the things I want you to do is check your receiver. As I said, God is the transmitter and you are the receiver. Check your receiver. Check to see if it's clear. Make sure all the voices from the enemy is silenced. Make sure that, that you are really got a, 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 the ability to enter into Christ. Ask yourself, Father, is there anything in me that you need to deal with so that I can be your receiver of what you're transmitting to the world? God, is there is there something I can do? The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 and 13, says, and if you will seek me and find me, you, when you search for me with all your heart, it says, and you will seek for me and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I looked up the word seek there in Hebrew. And do you know what that word means? It means to look for, to inquire and to require. There's three levels there. Can you see the three levels? The first level is to seek after God, to look for it, to, to, 
to, to be alert and to be watching for it. The second is to inquire, to not only just search and look for it, but to ask God, where are you, God? What are you saying to me? What is it you want me to hear? Who can I minister to today? Who can I affect for the kingdom of God? What can I do? You begin to ask God and question God. God, what do you want me to study today in the word? What, what word do you want me to study? What scripture would you like for me to look at today? And when we begin to inquire, then we move to that next level. But the next level is to require. What are things that you require? Our bodies require water and food. Our bodies require sleep and exercise. If we don't have those on a, on a daily basis, then our body will begin to shut down and not function, right? Do you require God like your body requires water? Do you require God like you require a car? Most of us need transportation and we need a car. Do you require God? And so you can see there's a different level there. Jesus says, if you will seek me, you will find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And that goes back to what David did. David was seeking God. He was seeking things he could not see. He was seeking God. So I want to encourage you, go after God like you've never gone. Lean into God. Press into God. There's been times I've been praying. I said, God, I'm not getting up. I'm going to be like Jacob. I'm not getting up until I get an answer from you. Until I hear you speak to me, I'm not getting up. Until whether you give me a scripture or until whether you give me a word in my spirit, I'm not getting up on this floor. I've said that to God many times before, and I felt like I was Jacob wrestling with God. There's other times when I said, God, I'm going to prove you on this. I'm going to, I'm going to do this until you tell me to stop, or I'm going to do this until I see some results. There's times when I've prayed with people and they haven't gotten healed. But then there's times when I have and they have gotten healed. And we've actually seen it happen right in front of our eyes. There are times when I've prayed for tumors to be gone. And, and I, I can't tell if those tumors are gone, but I believe that they're gone. And then there's times when, when I've prayed with a woman and she had tumors in her breasts. And I said, Phil, we'll see if they're gone. We prayed two times and they were completely gone. Other times, we've had to pray three or four times. So will you press in? Will you seek God? Will you get to the point where you inquire God and to the point where you require him? You have to have him. You can't make it through the day. What is it that you expect to hear from God? So many times we expect to hear these great downloads when God is just simply speaking. Love your neighbor. Clean your house. <laughs> get your house in order. God is simply saying, get ready. I'm getting ready to send a revival. Sometimes God will speak simple things to us before he will give us the, the, the downloads of, of revelation that we're seeking. But listen to that small, still voice. Listen to the simple things, and then God will be there. So you can't say that God doesn't talk because he does. Are you listening? Check your receiver. Make sure you've gotten all the voices out of the way. Make sure you've turned. And this is what I tell people, and I told my students this the other day. And I said, so many of us get on Facebook before we get in his book. We find out what the world is saying about us and what the world is saying to us before we will even seek what God is saying to us and what God is saying about us. And so sometimes we might need to silence that, that social media. Sometimes we might need to silence the voice of our family that's telling us we need to do certain things when we know it's against God's word. Sometimes we need to silence the voice of TV and, and even certain songs that we might listen to that might not uh, be bad songs. I'm not saying they're bad songs, but they might be voices that might be keeping us distracted and keeping us from hearing God's voice. So check, check. Indeed, God does talk. What is your inner spirit saying? God communicates from his spirit to our spirit. What do you hear in your inner man? What do you hear in your soul? What are you hearing in your spirit? What is God saying to you? Write it down. When God speaks to me, I write it down because I want God to know I'm serious about hearing his voice. I want to honor the voice of God by writing it down and recording what God is saying. So if you're struggling to hear God's voice, check your receiver. Check to see if it's open. The other thing is find his frequency. Find what God is saying. All these wonderful books that people have written are absolutely wonderful books. Some of them are self-help books, some of them are motivational books, some of them are inspirational books. But I want you to remember that those are books that they wrote. So those are downloads that God has given them. They're revelation that God has given them. What is God saying to you? So many times we're quick to hear the pastors will get on internet and listen to 20 different pastors preach in a week. We'll listen to everybody else's music instead of make our own music up for God. And what happens is we begin to hear other voices and not his. The Bible tells us in John 4, 10 and 4, which I started out with this, is that they know his voice. The sheep know his voice. 
I tell my children a lot of times that, you know, it's okay to have chips. It's okay occasionally to, to eat some chips or eat some crackers, but we really need to get the nutritional food in. I don't want your body to get used to junk food. I don't want your body to get used to uh, something just to fill you up until it's time for the, the real food, the vegetables and the, the protein and the things that you need to be eating. And so what happens and spiritually is the same thing. We get full of junk food. We get full of what God is saying to other people. And we don't always hear what God is saying to us because we sometimes feel we're not worthy. God wants to speak to you. If we tune in, we will hear him. We will hear his revelation. Sometimes he gives simple instructions just to see if you're ready for the big words, if you're ready for the big revelation. He will continue to do this for the rest of your life while you're here on earth. God will never quit speaking. He will never quit speaking. The question is, will you continue to listen? Will you make sure that your receiver is working? Will you make sure to find his frequency? Sometimes when I've traveled from Tennessee and I go into Georgia, sometimes the Christian station that I listen to on the radio, it gets all staticky. It gets real staticky and I can't hear. And so I'll have to adjust and try to find the station that has picked up the Christian station. And so that's finding God's frequency, finding what God is saying to you and how God is speaking to you. God wants to speak to you. You have to get rid of the things that are holding you back, the things like self-doubt, the things like, oh, he speaks to everybody else and not me. Listen, God is speaking. Are you listening? I just want you to know that you can hear God's voice. It's not just for the mature Christians. It's just not for the pastors. It's not just for the teachers. It's not just for uh, those that operate in a prophetic ministry and evangelists. It is for every son and daughter of God. God wants you to know his voice. Number three, if you're still struggling and after you have adjusted your, re or not adjusted, but checked your receiver to make sure that you've quiet all the other voices, and you've got on his frequency and you're beginning to hear his voice, then learn to discern that it is truly him. So many times we wrestle with that when we first start learning to hear God's voice. We say, God, is that you? And we battle ourselves. God, is that you? God, if that's you, let them sing that song one more time. God, if it's really you and you want me to go talk to somebody, give me another word of confirmation. If that's you, let the preach, preacher say hallelujah one more time. I think we've all been there. All of us have been there. We've been in those beginning stages of learning to hear God's voice. And so keep practicing. Don't get frustrated. Don't give up. And then this is what I want to say to you. Go and do what God's called you to do before you talk yourself out of it. Write it down before you forget what God has said. Record the word of God. If you'll cherish the word of God, <laughs> then God will cherish giving you the word of God. Amen. Okay. So there is more with God. There's always more. God doesn't quit speaking just because we leave church. God doesn't quit speaking just because we've walked out of our prayer closet. God doesn't quit speaking just because we're not hearing him. He is speaking and he wants you to have a relationship with him so he can download. You need to spend time with the Lord. A lot of time. He needs to be a priority. He needs to be number one. When God is number one and we make it and we put him first and we go after him, to the point where we seek him, we inquire him, and we require him, then guess what he does? He always answers. He will always hear your cry and you'll always answer. So the more you, time you spend with God, the more certain you are to become to hear God's voice. It just isn't time talking to him. When you have that time in the morning, it's not just for you to download your bucket list and tell God what you need and to even worship him. It's time for you to be quiet and listen to him. It's time for you to take advantage of yielding and saying, now, Lord, I'm going to listen to you. What is it you're saying to me? So it's during those times that you learn to discern God's voice. And the other thing I want to tell you is if you're still at that point, and you're like, God, I've checked my receiver. <laughs> I've checked my frequency. I'm beginning to hear your voice. Then you need to line up with the word of God. Make sure you line up what you're hearing with the word of God. If you're still doubting yourself and saying, am I hearing from God? Then ask yourself, what does God's word say about what I've just heard? What does God's word say? There was one time, and this was when I was first walking out this, and I was in college, and I had gone to, I guess it was a pizza hut, and we're sitting there, and um, the Lord began to speak to me about these 
uh, men, they were firefighters and uh, responders. They were first responders. Many of them, uh, you could tell that they were uh, EMTs and then the firefighters, and they were all eating pizza, giggling and laughing. And there were probably about 15 of them. And I'm one little college kid. And I'm like, Lord, you really want me to go up there? Or is that you, God? Are you sure, God, you want me to go up there and tell them this? This is so elementary. This is not deep. This is, this is just so elementary. Are you sure you want me to speak this to them? And so I get up and I walk up to that table and they're talking and I command their attention. They say, excuse me, this is what I feel the Lord told me to tell you. I'm trying to obey God and I just feel like I need to tell you that just as you go about saving people's lives, just as you are bringing people out of fire, and I pointed to the fire department, and I said, and just as you guys go about saving people and getting them the help they need so their lives can be saved, God wants to save you today. God is the ultimate saver, Savior, and he wants to bring salvation to your house today. And that's all I had to say. I didn't even know how to end it. I just said it, and I turned away and walked back to my table, and I was so embarrassed, and I was like, oh, great, I can't even eat the rest of this pizza. I'm so embarrassed, but I did what God told me to do. Did I see fruit of that? No, but I obeyed God. I practiced obeying God, and I tell people a lot of times, even now, listen, I feel God's given me something to share with you that I make be completely wrong, and I'm going to share it with you, and if you feel that this is what God would be saying to you, then you can come in agreement with what I've said and we'll pray over it. But if you feel I'm out of the ballpark, I am like a ball that's lost in high weeds, then you say so too. I said, because I am still learning to hear God's voice. I'm, I'm just trying to be obedient and I'll tell them what God says. And it's amazing how many times God always confirms his word with those people. And they'll say, yes, I needed to hear that. Yes, I was the little girl that had a little rope swing and I used to sing to God in the rope, in the swing. And so we start with something little and then God begins to build and build and build and build and he begins to trust us with more he begins us to give us deeper revelation and understanding and the spirit of god may tell you to do something um that may seem crazy i encourage you be crazy for the kingdom of god jesus says i've taken the things uh, uh, i've taken the foolish things to confound the wise <laughs> and so line it up with the word of god so this is what i say if god gives me a word this is what i say to himself does this line up with the word of god can I, can I back this word that I'm going to say? Can I back it with the word of God? And if I can, then I, I go ahead and obey God. And the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is inspired by God. All scripture is inspired by God. And so if we can back it up with the word of God, then we know it's not really our voices. It's God's voice. And we're just there to remind people of what God is saying. Okay? God will never tell you to do, to say, to think anything that's contrary to the word of God. He will never speak opposite the word of God. And so you can always know in your heart of hearts that you're speaking what God wants to speak by knowing it, it lines up with the word of God. God learns, God wants you to be trained to hear his voice. And he trains us through many different methods, but he starts with the word of God. So if you're still struggling to hear God's voice, I want you to get in the word of God. I want you to find time to pray. I want you to find time to get by yourself and say, God, I, I want to hear from you. Make yourself available. God, I want to be the one you speak to. I want you to speak to me. I'll honor your word. I'll cherish your word. I'll even write it down, God. I'm serious about hearing your voice. And then as God begins to speak to you, realize when there is a success, when people do get saved, when people do get healed, when people do uh, find that, that confirmation of what you spoke to them, and, and maybe people may fall to the ground and weep and cry, you don't get the glory. God gets the glory. It's God who's doing it. It's God who's speaking to you. And so if we can always stay humble and realize that God is the one who deserves the glory for anything that we can accomplish or anything that we can do this side of heaven, <laughs> it is God. It is God that does that. And so I just want to encourage you today that God does speak to you. God does hear your voice. Uh, God, God hears you. He knows your name and he wants to speak to you. And you got to live in confidence that you can hear God's voice. When the enemy comes and says you can't, you say, yes, I can. And one of the reasons that you know that you can't is because the enemy just told you you can't. And we know that the enemy is the father of all lies. And so you say, I can hear God's voice. God is going to speak to me. And you do this by drawing near to God. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it says, if we'll draw near to him, 
He'll draw near to us. And so when we draw near to God, he does great, incredible things in and through us. But it's not for our glory. It's for the kingdom's sake. It's not for us. It's for other people. God does it for other people. And so I just want to encourage you, whatever God places on your life, activate it. Activate it. If he gives you one word for one person, there's been times I've called people and said, God just gave me this word. And I don't know what it means. I just need to speak this word over you. Or God told me to pray this way over you. Or God, as I was praying, God gave me a scripture for you. And I'm going to send the scripture to you. Whatever God does, activate it and then allow God to get the glory. And God will continue to bless you. So I want to pray with you right now. I'm just going to do a generic prayer about hearing God's voice. And then we're going to take prayer requests. Do we have a lot of prayer requests? Okay, so we do have some prayer requests that we'll go over today. Okay, so let me just pray. God, in Jesus' name, Abba Father, we come to you. And Father, we know that you desire to speak to us in many ways. That you are, God, very creative. And when you speak, you don't speak in just one way. God, even throughout the word, when we read the word, we see that there are very uh, many different ways, various ways in which you spoke. And God, we know that you want to speak to us. So Lord, we pray that you will guide us in the spirit and that you will guide us in truth to obey your word and to begin to enjoy hearing your voice. We thank you that you have called us. We thank you that we are not just a friend. But Father, we are your sons and daughters and that you have much to say to us and that we can come boldly to the throne of grace and we can find help, Lord, wherever we need it in our life or wherever someone else may need it. We can find help in your presence, God. Lord, we ask that you will draw us near to you. We will feel that drawing in the middle of the night, during the day, God. We'll feel that drawing that you are calling us, Father, to come and sit at your feet, Father, and to hear your voice, Father. Lord, as we draw near to you, speak to us, Father. We seek God. We go beyond just looking for you, Father. We are inquiring and we are requiring you, Father. Abba, Father, we require you. We require your voice. We require the fact that we are in need of your presence every single day. And we ask that you will help us, Father, to draw near to you. Father, as your sheep, help us to hear your voice and to hear it clearly. Help us not to doubt. We silence the voice of the enemy that tells us that we cannot hear the voice of God. We silence the voice of the enemy that says the, that God is not speaking anymore. We silence the voice of the enemy that will come and say that we are unworthy and unvaluable and that we We've made too many mistakes and that God will not speak to us. We silence the voice of the enemy and we say to the enemy that in a, you're defeated because God is trying up and God desires to speak to us. Help us to guard our hearts, Lord, by guarding our eyes and our ears, Father. Help us to guard, guard our hearts from the influences of the word, the world and the influences of people around us, Father. Help us, Lord Jesus, to, to, to you know, Lord, be able to stand strong in the midst of what we are enduring, God, but be full of perseverance and know, Father, that our hope and our faith is built in you, Father, and that, Lord, Abba, Father, <laughs> you desire to take care of us. You desire for us to lean on you. You love it when we come to you and when we bring our needs to you, and you love to speak to us, Father. And God, we ask that you will speak to us, Father. Help us not to be deceived by the enemy and by his lies. Help us not to, Lord, be overwhelmed by voices, Lord, that are not yours. Help us, Lord Jesus, to, Lord, come against the distractions that will keep us out of our quiet places, out of our secret places, out of our prayer closets and our war rooms, Father. Help us to come against those distractions, God, and to stand, Father. And I pray, God, that as we seek you today for instruction and we seek you for correction and guidance and we seek you, Father, for a download of what you want to share, God, that you will confirm your voice to us through our spirit, God. And Lord, help us to operate in wisdom and give us liberty, Father, to know your voice and give us boldness to come and ask and say, God, I want to hear your voice. I'm ready to listen, and I want to know your voice, God. I ask, Lord, that you will help us, Father, to find that place, God, where we hear your voice and help us to be confident in knowing that we do indeed hear your voice and that you indeed do speak, God. And we thank you, Father, for these things. And, Lord, we pray for Wendy right now. We pray for her son. God, you know the need. 
I pray for this young man in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come in agreement with this mother for her prayers for her son. Bring her son home. I pray that her son will come to know his full identity in you. His identity is not spoken by the world. It's not spoken by an idea, Father. The identity that you created him to be, Father, is... Lord, even in his genetics, God, it is in the DNA, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that he will recognize who he is in Christ and that he has been deceived by the enemy. And the enemy, Father, has, has uh, bound him, trapped him, uh, encased him. And we come against the enemy in this young man's life in the name of Jesus. We declare this man free in the name of Jesus. We declare, Father, for clarity to come to his mind, God, revelation to come. We declare, Father, for you to be able to speak to him, God, amidst the thorns and the the, the the ropes that I see, I just see this young man bound up in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I see him bound up. Jesus, help me, Father. I see him bound up. It's like as if there's thorns all around him. He's bound up with thorns, and the thorns are pressing into his, his body is the way I see him in my soul right now. And, and, and when people reach out to touch them, he, he's, really, he's really short with them, and they get pricked by the thorns. And I come against these thorns that are bounding him up in the name of Jesus. I speak against those ropes that are bounding him up in the name of Jesus. And I say, fall in the name of Jesus. Son, be set free in the name of Jesus. Where there is bondage, there is freedom in the spirit. We declare where there is identity issues, we declare that there will be sonship in the name of Jesus. Where there is confusion, we declare clarity of thought in this son's life in the name of Jesus. Wendy, we're agreeing with you that your son is going to come into a new revelation. God's going to begin to speak to him. His way of life, he's getting tired of it. Oh, hallelujah. He's looking and he's searching. Is there more? Is there more? What is life really all about? And I declare that he will come in and find an encounter with God. Lord, I pray for secret agents to go to this young man in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just as you freed many in the Bible, I believe that you're going to free this young man in the name of Jesus. We call you home, young man. Jackson, we call you home in the name of Jesus. We call you home in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Jan Frisbee, God. You see the need, Lord. She needs a home, Lord, that is closer to uh, Chris's work, God. We pray that you will meet the need there, Father. I pray, God, that she will come in agreement and pray according to your word, Father, for this house, God. God. And Lord, I thank you, God, for what you will do in and through her life, God. Lord, we pray for Ashton Nord, the little boy with cancer. Uh, he had a successful surgery, uh, but he needs um, continual healing. God, we, can, we continue to pray for Ashton. God, we pray, Lord, that his vision will not be impaired. We pray for complete and total healing, God, so that, God, he will be a testimony to those that are around him, Father. Lord, I pray against this cancer, and I say to you, you foul spirit of cancer, we ask you in the authority and the power. We don't ask. We command you in the name of Jesus to leave this little boy's body. We pray for healing to come to him in the name of Jesus. We declare it and we decree, God. We ask the Holy Spirit to come and heal his body, Father. We pray for Penny right now. She's had brain surgery. She needs relief from pain and she needs complete healing. We declare, uh, Lord, that you will touch Penny, God. Lord, there's so many people, God, that you desire to heal. We pray that you'll send your healing power to Penny right now through the internet right now where she's at, laying on her bed, God. I pray that you will heal her in the name of Jesus. I pray that the pain will subside, Father, and there will be no complications from surgery, God, but healing will come to her, Father. Lord, I pray for Vivian, God. Lord, the severe pain in her left leg. God, we pray for her right now. God, we pray that you will touch Vivian. Vivian, God's been speaking some things to you. I see him right now, the things that you need to already do. Hallelujah. The things that God is speaking to you, if you will begin to activate those things, I believe the healing will come to your body in the name of Jesus. God, give Vivian courage to follow you, Father. Help her to improve her health, God. Help her, Lord, to have a tenacity and a spirit, God, of perseverance, Lord, to inhale, Lord, to, to bring about better health in her body and in her system, God. God, so that she, Father, can be set free of all the things that the doctor says she has, all the things that they're calling, Lord, the, 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 the diabetes, Father, the high blood pressure. I call it out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We pray for Vivian right now, Father. Lord, I pray for Sarah right now, God. She's having trouble sleeping because of anxiety and nightmares. Oh, hallelujah. Sarah, just ask the peace of God to come into your room right now. Lift your hands right now, Sarah, and say, Holy Spirit, I invite you to bring the peace of God upon my life. Sarah, say this. Anxiety, I command you to leave my body, my soul, my spirit, and my mind. I command you to leave me in the name of Jesus. I command you, anxiety, to go to the feet of Jesus. Sarah, the Holy Spirit just kind of spoke to me and said that anxiety has been cast out of you. Many of times you've cast your cares and your anxieties away, but you've not cast them to go to the feet of Jesus. If you don't cast them to go to the feet of Jesus where they are bound, then they will come back. So I want you to cast them to go to the feet of Jesus and say, I cast you fear. I cast you spirit of fear. I cast you anxiety to the feet of Jesus. I, 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 I bind you there in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and take your authority and cast it away in the name of Jesus. I pray for peaceful rest to come to her. God, you said you give rest to your children. I pray that you will quiet her mind and her spirit so that she can rest and so that she can hear your voice. I pray in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree, Sarah, you will hear God's voice. Hallelujah. We pray for Lita. God, we pray for uh, her eldest daughter that she would have peace and that God would provide financial for college and there will be no more stress. Father, I pray right now for this older daughter of Alita, God. I pray, God, that your hand would be upon her father. I pray, God, that, Lord, that there would be peace of God, peace that passes all understanding, supernatural peace that would invade her home, her spirit, her mind, her soul, that it would invade her room, that the peace of God would be as a cloud that would follow her wherever she goes. I declare, Father, that the peace of God would reside on her, Father, as stress is eliminated out of her life, Father. We do believe, God, that stress is part of life. And God, we can all always get rid of every part of stress, but you can teach this oldest daughter, God, to handle stress in a productive, creative way, in a way that brings about, Lord, momentum, in a way that brings about, Father, uh, completion of work, God, not in a way where it paralyzes her, God. But I pray, Father, you'll give her a healthy stress level, Father, and that you will give her the peace of God. And Father, we pray financially, God, for her, God, that, Lord, you will open the doors for her to go to college, God. You said you own all the money, all the things on this earth are yours, Father, and we ask for financial blessings to flow her way. In the name of Jesus, we believe it, Lord. We pray, God, for Karen, uh, who has been battling colon cancer and is in much pain. God, we again speak to this cancer. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we extend our faith to Karen right now. God, I declare Karen will be made whole in the name of Jesus. I believe that, God, you your name is higher than this cancer. And we ask the Holy Spirit to come right now and we speak to this colon cancer and we say out in the name of Jesus. Karen, if you're listening, you need to come in agreement with us. All of us together, we say out in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you have to leave. You have invaded her body and you are an alien in her body and we command you to leave on the authority and the power of Jesus Christ. We pray the Holy Spirit will send his blood to heal Karen in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we ask you to heal Karen in Jesus mighty name we pray it and we believe it in the name of Jesus we thank you father for what you've done and what you're going to do thank you for building faith thank you for the faith of God that has been filled today father and Lord we give you glory we give you glory for all the things you've done father none of us can take glory for any of the things that you've done and we want to honor you and give you praise and give you glory God because you indeed are working and you indeed are speaking God you are speaking to everyone, God. And we know that, Father, because there's sometimes, God, words are confirmed. Lord, there's things that you have said in Australia that are now being said in America. There's things that have been said in America that pastors are hearing in Ghana, Africa. Father, we know that you're speaking. Help us to tune in and get on your frequency and hear your voice, God, and to activate your voice and make it something, Father, that you, God, can continually speak to us about, Father. Lord, I'm a vessel. Speak through me, God. 
I want to be one that you download things to. Father, I want to hear your voice. I want to declare your voice. I want, Lord, to be that, that one that you spoke to like you did John the Revelator. You spoke things to him and you told him to come up on higher. You told him to come up higher and he was able to see a vision in heaven. I want to see things, Father. I want to see the unseen things, God, so that I can encourage and build the body of Christ up, Father. I'm, I'm available, God. Speak to me. Pray that prayer right now. Say, God, I'm available. Speak to me. Speak to me tonight, God. Speak to me when I get up in the morning. Speak to me when I get out in the morning and in my car. Speak to me wherever I am, God. I'll take time to notice that you're talking. I'll take time to write it down in the name of Jesus. Amen. So if there is anybody out there that um, has something that God has done, I want you to share it with us. I want you to uh, uh, join us and pray with us. If you see prayer requests on here, we pray every single day for those prayer requests. And we're believing that God is going to take care of those prayer requests, that those prayer requests are going to become praise reports. And so write it in, text it in, messages, we'll be praying. And if you see those messages that are on this actual page, please join us in prayer because the Bible says where two or three are gathered in my name and we pray according to the word of God. Not only is he in the midst of us, but he will accomplish what we've prayed in the name of Jesus. All right. God bless you. It's so good to have tuned in. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part and uh, help share this today. Would you share this uh, with a friend? Uh, get some friends to listen. Let's share the word that God is indeed speaking and he wants to speak to you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you and make his face shine upon you. And may you have a wonderful week in Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> We're trying to turn this off. There it is. Thank you.